Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. Now in this video we're showing you how to use the new touch input with screens here in Stormworks. As always we'll go over the new components that you'll need along with that is show you how to actually build up the microprocessor. We'll go and get it all connected and finally we'll build an example here in game. Now if you're enjoying this video comment below and anyone else you'd like to see any of my future videos while you're there, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and click the little bell icon to be notified of any of my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. So all said, let's get straight into it and get started with the tutorial. So to get started, we're back here in the workbench. Now the first thing you can see in front of me, I've just got a little base like we usually do for these videos. Now I've got a large screen just here in front of me, along with that is also going to be a battery and we also have a on signal. Now the battery is obviously because we're here in advance and we need to power up our screen. The on signal is obviously just to turn the monitor on by default so that it's always going to be on. Now the first thing that we're going to be needing is we're going to be needing a microprocessor to obviously handle everything thing here that we need. So we're going to go and go into our microcontroller here, editor, and I'm going to rename this to go be our touch input video. Fantastic. With that, uh, the size and length I'm happy with just right now. The logic that we will need for this is going to be a video out, so obviously going to the monitor itself, and we will also need a composite in. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a composite in. Now, depending on what you want to get out of this, for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm just gonna get two simple on signals coming out of it. Obviously, you can play with this however you want, and you can do what you want with it. As I said, for the purpose of the tutorial, we're just gonna go with two on signals coming out of the actual screen itself. So the next thing we need to go and do is actually go jump into, we can do our symbol here if you really want to. Uh, I'm just going to do a very, very simple kind of like half screen kind of thing just to say that I know what it is where I can find it in my in my inventory there. So we're just gonna do that. We're then going to jump into our logic. Now you can see here we have two outputs coming out of our screen. We have our composite coming in, so from our touch screen, and we have our video out. So we have our three outs and our one in. The next thing you want to do is you want to grab the lure block. Now grab the lure block down, you can place it and you can see we have our composite coming in from the touch screen into the lure block. Then from the lure block we are coming out into our actual video. Along with that we are need to take the composite and manage to convert it into two off and ons, okay? To do that, what we want to do is we simply just going to go and grab our composite read on and off and just place two of these down just over here. Just that simple, okay? Now we take the composite, connect it to these two and we say composite one and composite two channel and then we can go and just connect it to those outputs. That's all we need for the connections. We'll come back and do the Lua script in a couple seconds. I'm gonna save this down and call it touch screen video. We'll get that placed down, exit here, jump into our inventory and go and find it in our inventory here. Now if I'm gonna correct, so there it is right there, we can now place it down on the outside of our screen. To get the logic set up, we need electricity, that's done, video, we'll get that connected up there and we'll grab our touch which is gonna go from the screen into the processor. And then we obviously need our two outs going into something. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be used using two simple lights. So you can see here, we'll have one over here and one over here, and then we'll know if it's actually registering our touch input from the screen itself, okay? Along with that, make sure you connect up your electricity if you are copying this tutorial. Now with that, uh, the last thing we need to do is actually go into the microprocessor and edit the Lua script now that we have everything connected. Click on the Lua, edit the script, and just delete everything here. Once you've done that, for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna be starting by using the actual demo that they've used in this video, and I'll explain it as we go along. So you can see here, we have the actual touchscreen data. What we can do is we can just copy all of this across and we can start understanding it in a couple seconds here. So first off it says to us read the touchscreen data from the script's composite input. Input x, input get number 3, input y, input get number 4 and is pressed is equal input get bull 1. Okay now if we look at this this makes a little bit of sense we say well we have a look at the screen here input 1x and 1y is meaning where are you pressing on the screen itself, okay? We then have 
on off channels. So if you are pressing on the screen, it's going to have a signal coming in there. So you can see here right here, it's saying, well, where you are pressing on the X axis, where are you pressing on the Y axis? And then are you actually pressing the screen here? Okay. Along with that, it's then saying, check if the player is pressing the rectangle at 10 by 10 with the width and height of 20. So it's saying is pressing rectangle is equals to is pressed and is point in rectangle, which is input X and input Y. Okay. And it's at a X value of 10 and a Y value of 10 with a width of 20 and a height of 20. The next thing is saying set the composite out on off channel one if we are pressing rectangle one. Okay. Now that's just the on tick. We then have returns a true point X and Y between this value. None of this you need to change guys. Please leave it as is. You do not need to edit this at all. I will show you what we'll be doing in a couple minutes. This pretty much just tells it where it needs to do. Along with that, we also have the function on draw. With this example, it's pretty much saying, well, if the player is pressing the rectangle, then it's going to draw a screen, sorry, draw on the screen a rectangle filled at 10 by 10 with a 20 and 20. Okay. If you're not pressing it, it's going to do a regular try, try a rectangle without it being filled, just the outline at 10 by 10 by 20. Now you can go and spawn this in right now and it's going to work. And I can show you right now if we go and spawn this in right here go and connect it we won't have to do anything just yet but i will do it in a couple seconds you can see there we have the rectangle if i press it it goes and fills the box that's simple now i'll show you how to understand the code if we go and bring this back into our workbench you can see here we can go and grab that and we can come to our lure now what we don't really need right this very minute is this we don't need to output at the moment we will need it in a couple minutes but we won't need it right now we can go and delete that along with that you can see this part we won't change as i said earlier on we can now start playing with this and we can start playing with this so it says here check the player is pressing the rectangle at this height and this height with this width and this height of the actual block itself now i recommend you go and find out what the screen height and width is that you are drawing to the reason why we do that is because then we can obviously adjust accordingly to the size of the screen so if you use a small screen medium screen large or extra large so what we're going to do is we're going to come here and we're going to drag grab our screen height and width and we're going to say that screen width is equals to w okay easy and then our height is equal to h perfect if i can put it down right there we go cool that means what we can do is we can now start centering and doing equations with the w and h so we can say well if a player is for example on the x-axis and y-axis so x-axis is going across so it's your width so we can say here well width divided by two okay which is exactly the center of the screen we can then put that in brackets right here or we could do and just say well hey we want we always wanted to start at one Okay, which is the left hand side of the screen along with that what is the height that we want we can then say well the height is going to be 10 it could be 20 it could be whatever you want it to be if you want in the middle screen what we could do is we could take our height divided by 2 and there you go you have the same height now we're going to leave it like this and we'll just bring it down to probably about a width of about should we go with 10 and a height of about 10 so it's going to do a 10 by 10 block along with that we also because we've changed those numbers there we need to go down and change where the rectangle is going to be drawing on the screen itself so you can see here i want to draw it one and one and i want to draw 10 and i want to do a size of 10 and a size of 10 okay that means that the block that we're drawing is the same size as the input that we're receiving from the touchscreen itself. Please remember if you are changing this to go and change the sizes of where it's actually going to be drawing on the screen itself. Now, with that, if we spawn it back in, you'll see that it's gone and decrease the size of the block and we're fine. Now, the next cool thing that we can do is actually start writing some text within that area. To go and write the text within that area, all we need to do is come to the end here and add a simple text. Now, if you want it to be exactly in the center of the screen, I recommend you use the 
text box. Now, with the text box itself, it's very similar to the regular text. You can see here, screen.drawText box at X and Y position. So X position is going to be one and Y position is going to be 10. With the width and height, what's the width? Well, the width is 10 and the height is 10, same as our rectangles up here. And it says, what is the text going to be? Well, I'm gonna call it text uh, one. So make sure you put your little brackets here or little, sorry, quotation marks. And you can see here, we're going to be drawing one. The next thing you have is the height line and the vertical line. You don't have to use this. However, this receives a either minus one to the left or one to the right on both of those. So if you are to go and give it a value of zero, that means it's always in the center. Now, one thing we haven't accounted for is the size of the box itself. So you can see here, the rectangle itself is a 10 by 10. That means the box inside it is going to be a nine by nine because it's obviously taking up one pixel. So now it should be exactly in the center of the screen. Okay, that's a nine by nine, perfect. Along with that, we also need to go and shift it to the one to the right and one down because remember it draws from the top left down to the bottom right. Okay, so we got that. We can then check the errors. There are no errors. We can then go and spawn it in and you'll see we should have a smaller box with a little text input. And there you go. You can see we have a nice small box with a beautiful one right in the center of it. If you click it, it goes and fills. Now you can obviously change the color of that if you want to, to whatever you want. Now, if you want to add a second or third or fourth or fifth or whatever, how many boxes you want, we can continue the same process. So what we're going to do is go back into our Lua script, come back into here, and we're gonna say, well, great. Let's grab exactly right here, this first code. Now you can get rid of this text at the top if you want to. I'm gonna leave it here for the purpose of the tutorial. I'm gonna say, well, is player pressing rectangle, okay? Equal to is pressed and is pointing in a rectangle. We're gonna say, well, the next point is going to be same, same x-axis. However, we're going to go, let's go 25. That means we're leaving five in between, okay? Which is perfectly fine because remember this is going 10 down also. And we're gonna 10, 10, which is exactly the same. Along with that, we also want to go and put a, a new variable just over here underneath. So underneath, we can do a brand new variable right there. Perfect. And this time we want to obviously change it to match the top one. So one, one, and then we're gonna do 25 by 25. You can leave everything else the same for now because it's the same positions and same sizes. Lastly, we want to go and add in another text box. So I'm gonna add another text box. This time I'm gonna call it still a two. However, the position is going to be 26. So one up from above up there. We're also gonna have it nine by nine and this time I'm gonna call it two. Okay, perfectly simple. Now, one thing you need to go and change a couple of these tags over here. So we're saying, well, is pressing rectangle, is pressing rectangle. We need to change that to something else. I'm gonna call it one, okay? Along with that, is pressed, we need to add another one over here. So you can go and take another one of these. Cool. Add those in just over there. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Just make sure you add in a end at the end of that. Great. Okay, function end, perfect. Is rectangle in, perfect. Is rectangle, great, that's all in. Number one, is pressed, is pressed. That's perfectly fine, don't need to change any of that. And then all we need to come down is do is change this to a one. Simple, so that code is taking it from here. Nice and easy, nice and simple. We can go and check the errors. There are no errors right now. We can go then and spawn this in just over here. And you can see we have one and we have two. Just like that, guys. Very easy, very simple. And you can make as many boxes and you don't have to have this on and off. You can have this as a left, right, a number. It's really up to you. But this is the basics so far of it. Now, lastly, we want to go and connect our two light switches to come on when we turn those on off signals here. Now, to do that, once again, pretty simple. All we need to do is come back into here, go into our Lua script and start having a look at our code again. So you can see if we're going to the help, we can go down here and double check what we have. And you can look at the example once again. And you can see here, set the composite output on off channel one. So easy, we just go and grab that. We then bring it and paste it down to the end of our on tick. 
and we grab another one because we have two outputs, one on channel one and one on channel two. Okay, so channel two, go and override it there. Or we can leave that as one, maybe change that second one to channel two, okay? And then you can see here we're using is pressed in ring tangle and is pressed in ring tangle. We can go and change that to value one, okay? So it's saying if that's pressed, then it's going to do that on channel two. If it's doing this, it's gonna go here on channel one, okay? Nice and simple. Oh, we have an error, line 14, okay? So it seems to have an error here. Why is there an error? So I'm guessing it's not working because we haven't added in our brackets at the end. I forgot to copy that across. So once we've done that, let's test it out. You can see there's no errors anymore. We can press the done. We can click the updates. Okay, make sure we have all our logic connected. So we come into here, make sure our data is connected, all that's connected, electricity, all good. Let's go ahead and spawn it in. We can then come on the side and we press one. Hey, the light's coming on. We press two and the light's coming on. Guys, it's that simple and easy. I will do another tutorial and get a little bit more advanced on this, show you how to maybe up and down your map screens and do a couple things, maybe how to control something using the touch input on the screen. But that's how simple it is. If you follow my step-to-step -step guide right now, as the version sits right now, which is 7.62, this will work as you've seen in the tutorial right now. So I think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat entertaining and informative as always. And we'll see you in the next one.